We're here to talk about thin gauge materials and some of the challenges that those pose. Uh, not so much the why. You guys all know why you're using this stuff. It's thinner gauge. It allows higher frequencies. You can build uh, stronger motors on smaller platforms, decrease weights. And a lot of you folks, especially the EV and the aerospace folks, you're into this already. So I'm not going to preach to the choir about why you're doing this, but it does provoke or it presents a certain set of challenges when you're manufacturing product. Whether you're stamping this or you're laser cutting this, you're dealing with a foil that the machinery may or may not have been designed to process. So there's a lot of tweaks, there's a lot of uh, art form, there's a lot of experience and learning that our 35 years of laser cutting materials and our 15 plus years of stamping materials all bring to bear here. Um, today, with the motor designs that are coming out, uh, we are seeing a lot more call for thin gauge, non-grain oriented, grain oriented, and special alloy materials like nickel and cobalt. Over the course of the past few years, we've, we've seen material get thinner and thinner. Um, it typically, it used to be 29, 26, and 24 gauge, which runs basically 14 thousandths to 29 thousandths material. Um, at this point, we're seeing a lot of the material change into five, six, seven thousandths material, which is quite a bit thinner um, than what we normally would see a few year, years ago. Um, some of the challenges with thin gauge electrical steels uh, come in the form of how they're actually manufactured. Um, in order to get a thin gauge, what happens is a lot of times the mills will take a billet of material and roll it out to a certain thickness. Uh, so when you're talking about a standard gauge material, it might be 24 thousandths, it might be 18 thousandths, it might be 14 thousandths. Well, what's happening now is we're starting to get a lot of call for materials that are 11 thousandths, 7 thousandths, 6 thousandths. We've, we've cut laminations that are 6 thousandths and even 4 thousandths. So things are getting th thinner and thinner. What happens in the process at the mill is, in that rolling process, what's happening is, those rolls are, as it's thinning the material, it's compressing those, the grain structure and it is inducing stress into that material. Um, what that poses a challenge for with us in either laser cutting or stamping is when you remove that material through either process, uh, that material is going to want to spring. The stresses that are inherent in the material may cause that lamination to move in those areas that you remove the material. Uh, so the challenges there come down to how do you control that movement and how do you prevent that movement or compensate for that movement in order to produce a part to print. The other issue that we run into is some of these smaller parts to try and get them out of the skeleton and have a good part uh, due to the tabbing issue and the removal of these parts can be sometimes difficult. Without the use of custom fixtures, what we'll see and what we've seen in the past is the material will buckle and move around on you, which will then create a bad part, which will be non-conforming. Some of the challenges we encompass um, stamping thinner material is the die clearance. The thinner the material, the less die clearance you're gonna have and the more uh, curl you're gonna receive because of the die clearance um, that's required in order to stamp. While laser cutting some of the thinner materials, um, stress relieving and it cr tends to want to undulate and move around on you. Um, and again, some of the fixtures that we ex customly designed here will allow the material to, to stay flat even while we're laser cutting during the stress relieving process. And those are the types of things that our engineers deal with every day in coming up with creative fixturing and coming up with processes either in laser cutting or stamping that might help alleviate some of those stresses prior to us coming up with the finished product. Um, so those are some of the challenges you get with material movement. Other challenges uh, might come into play would be, uh, for instance, in a laser machine, uh, you have an assist gas. And when you have a very thin material, think about a 4,000 sheet of material, it's about the thickness of a sheet of paper. And it's very, very flexible and movable. With laser cutting, we have an assist gas that we use in order to dissipate and blow the material away from the part. That assist gas on a very thin piece of material like that can cause that material to vibrate, move, 
and actually potentially kick a uh, part out of tolerance. So um, some of the challenges that our engineers work with are developing, fixturing, holding, you know, holding of, of, of not only the part but of the raw material itself to get it into a flat state that is going to minimize the effect of uh, any of that you know, assist gas that might be moving the parts. In the stamping process, um, the challenges might be a little bit different when you get into thinner gauge parts. Um, part of the process of stamping is feeding the, the raw material into the press before you hit the part. And again, think about trying to push a sheet of paper uh, that's very thin, sometimes you know, one inch or under in, in, in thickness through a press that's, you know, th through a press that's maybe uh, 60 or 80 inches long without buckling or bending that material. Um, and some of the things that our engineers need to, to develop are uh, ways to keep that material flat as it's feeding through the press uh, so that we don't buckle and, you know, create potentially a crass position in the press. Um, in doing so, that progression also uses pins that uh, lift the material and move it to the next station. Um, there's always the chance as well of those pins actually tearing the material in the progression, which could cause uh, not only feeding issues, but possibly uh, a crash condition or part accuracy issues. Uh, part of being a, a key component to our customer base is the uh, stocking of uh, materials that would uh, be, be created or that would be used for those types of laminations. Uh, we've been doing this now for over 35 years and um, part of our stocking program is now moving more towards uh, furnishing grades of material that might be more thin than your, your typical lamination uh, grades that you've typically used, such as 29 gauge, 26 gauge, and 24 gauge. And in order for us to be a value to our customers, it's important that we stock those type of materials in our facility in order to accommodate uh, the lead times that a lot of our customers are looking for and trying to get a product either to market or to prototype. So there's a lot of challenges that we uh, deal with in thin gauge materials. Uh, we are becoming experts at it. We are learning things new every day because the designs keep changing. The laminations are becoming thinner and thinner, not only in, in, in thickness, but also back iron and fingers. So a lot of really neat stuff going on right now. Uh, we're up to the challenge. We love working with customers on those type of projects. So if you have uh, you know, a unique application that you need some assistance in, manufacturing, uh, laser technology certainly has the experience and capabilities to help you out on those type of projects. We've got some experts here that have been with us for 20 years doing this and dealing with different materials. And you would think metal is metal. But when you're dealing with a thin gauge, especially some of this very expensive alloy material, every inch, every second, every moment on the machine matters. Everything that goes into fixturing matters. That's where we come into play. Uh, we're a good resource. We're a great partner. And we've got ways that we don't even know yet, really because they're developing on the fly. As you guys are developing this stuff out in the industry and using it and finding new uses and more creative things to do, we're doing the same thing here on the processing side. And that's where our engineering team and our production team come into play. So if you want to talk to somebody about that, if you've got questions, contact us. Uh, we'll point you in the, the right direction and if there's a question, we'll find an answer for you. If we can't answer it, we'll point to you to somebody that can. But we're here to help. We're experts in the field. We've been doing this a long time. Give us a call.